If you're an app developer, you know that mix of excitement and panic when your app is finally ready. You've built something amazing, tested it endlessly, and now you're staring at that shiny submit button on the App Store. But before you hit it, stop. This final stretch is where most people mess up, and the App Store is ruthless when it comes to rejections. If you want a smooth launch, you need to slow down and do this right. First, your app needs to be polished. And I don't just mean it kind of works. I mean real testing, real users, real feedback. Don't rely on your own phone or one emulator. Test edge cases. Ask friends to break it. Squash every bug you can find. Because trust me, Apple's reviewers will find them faster than you think. Once your app is stable, shift your focus to how it looks on the store. That's your storefront, your first impression. Use clean, high-resolution screenshots. Don't just show your app. Show what problem it solves and how it makes life easier. If you can, add a short video. And when you write your app description, don't make it robotic. Make it compelling. Explain why this app exists, what it does, and why someone should choose it over the rest. Now here's where a lot of developers get rejected. The guidelines. Apple has strict rules for a reason. They want apps that respect privacy, that are secure, and that clearly belong to the person or business submitting them. Let's talk privacy first. If your app asks for location, camera, microphone, or contacts, anything that touches a user's private life, you need to explain exactly why. And not just to Apple. In your App Store description, make it crystal clear to users. If your app takes photos, explain why it needs the camera. If it tracks fitness, justify the health data request. Don't just ask for permissions because other apps do. Ask only for what you absolutely need and explain it well. The second part is app ownership. If your app is branded under a company name, but you're submitting it from a personal or different developer account, Apple's going to want proof. That means you need the legal right to publish on that company's behalf. It could be a contract, a business certificate, a trademark, or all of the above. If the developer name and the app branding don't match, prepare your paperwork now, not after the rejection email. Also, stay updated. Apple's rules evolve. A guideline that was fine last month could get your app rejected next week. Check the Apple Developer Program regularly and keep up with policy updates. Let's go through a few common mistakes that people overlook. First, metadata. Double-check your app name, keywords, category, support URLs, everything. Even small inconsistencies can delay your approval. Next, your screenshots and videos must be in the correct format and red resolution. If they aren't, it's an instant rejection. Don't just reuse old screenshots. If you've updated your UI or added major features, your screenshots need to reflect that. New update, new visuals. It's that simple. Don't just copy-paste a feature list. Speak to your audience. Once you submit, the waiting begins. But your job isn't done. Start monitoring reviews and feedback as soon as you go live. That's your early warning system. If users are confused or frustrated, fix it fast. Respond to reviews, especially negative ones. Show users that there's a human behind the app who cares. It makes a huge difference. And keep your app alive. Don't abandon it after launch. Update regularly, improve performance, add features, fix bugs. A stagnant app fades into the background. A living app builds momentum. Look, launching an app isn't just about the code. It's about trust, clarity, and making sure everything is tight, from the app itself, to the listing, to the paperwork behind it. You will get rejected sometimes. Don't take it personally. Every rejection is feedback. Every launch teaches you something new. This whole process is one big learning curve. 